Hello guys and girls, in this video we are going to do something different than the usual programming. We are going to discuss what languages and environments you should learn if you want to become a web developer. I won't go in depth in each subject, but rather give you a brief walkthrough on each subject. This should help you get an understanding of what you need to learn to understand the basics of web development and in which order you should learn it. And this video is mainly targeted towards beginners who want help to get a career uh, started in web development and anyone can do it you do not need an education but it's hard work and uh, you need to put in effort and time the reason i feel like i can actually give a valuable and helpful guide for you to get started with web development is because i've been working with web and software development professionally for about 10 years of which the last four years uh, i've been running my own software development company I work with a lot of other people and before I start working with a developer there's a couple of areas of web development that is very important for me that the developer understands. These are the areas of uh, web development we will talk about today. And hopefully you already know them or you can learn them. So let's get started with the, the first question a lot of people have. What languages should I learn for web development? So understand what you should learn. Instead of focusing on what languages you should learn, we will begin by focusing on the different key areas of web development you should learn. A programming language is simply a syntax, which you can learn in a few days. Web development is the complete opposite. It's a large subject where each area should be learned individually as a whole and how the different areas of web development are connected to each other. The areas you absolutely must understand are number one, the front end, number two, the back end, number three, the web server, and number four, server in this order. We will briefly we will briefly cover each of these key areas individually in this guide. And if you follow this guide and feel like this is way too much to learn, start by focusing on only part one and two, the front end and back end. Learn each of these key areas individually and how they are connected. All right. So how the front end and back end integrate with each other and how they work together. You can learn the first two parts in a few months if you give it some time and effort, a couple of hour, hours uh, every day, five days a week. We will start by talking about the front end where the user interface lives, then proceed to the back end and discuss programming languages, frameworks and databases and database architecture. The front end and back end together create an application which consists of a user interface logic and route routing written in a programming language and data storage in a database. The application is then placed on a web server. The web server is running on a server. You could say that the web server and server also belong to the back end, but to make this guide understandable, we will split the key areas in four parts. All right. So let's start off with number one, the front end. The front end is the client side of the application and the first key area you should learn individually. The front end consists of a UI, which is short for user interface. The UI is often responsive and written in HTML and CSS. Therefore, HTML and CSS are the very first things you should learn. HTML and CSS are not programming languages. They are markup languages, all right? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is used to code markup for UI. Take a look at the screen to the right. There are six menu items stacked vertically. Each menu item and the content inside each menu item are HTML. CSS stands for Cascade Style Sheet and is used to style and position HTML. CSS is also used to make the UI responsive across multiple screen sizes and devices. In the screen to the right, the CSS controls the position and the style of the HTML. All right, so that's HTML and CSS, the absolute basics. 
And when you know how to write HTML and CSS, you can proceed to learn semantic markup in HTML5. You can also learn CSS preprocessors like less and sus to make your CSS code more maintainable. Learn how to optimize the HTML and CSS code, for example, by minimizing it. Also learn how to write responsive and maintainable code. When a UI, UI is responsive, it looks and feels good for the end user, no matter the device or the screen size of the device. The UI should adapt to the screen and device. Also learn how to make your code maintainable. By making your code maintainable, I mean structure it good, make sure you indent the code and that it's structured so other people can actually read your code and not only you, all right? Also learn how to write SEO friendly code for the front end. There are ways to make your HTML code SEO friendly by using the right elements at the right places. This is not something you must learn immediately, but it's in your favor. If you know it, you will probably gonna have to use it sooner or later at work. It's also important that you learn how to debug HTML and CSS, learn how to use the developer tools in different browsers like the inspector tool. Also make sure your code is written to work across all major browsers like Chrome, IE, Edge, Safari, uh, Firefox and so on, Opera and so on. All right. Now when you get these five parts down, you know how to create a good UI and you know how the front end uh, of an application works. So then process by, for example, learning a front end framework such as, such as React JS, then you can learn some JSX, which is basically built up on HTML uh, and keep, keep learning new stuff. Uh, a front end framework can also make your code much more maintainable uh, and faster. Learn a CSS framework such, such as Bootstrap that will help you uh, to write responsive code since there are all already classes created in Bootstrap for responsive UIs, all right? So that's two things you can do once you get the front end part down. The back end, as you can see, the back end has multiple smaller subjects. I have divided the back end part of this guide into three small parts, programming language, frameworks, databases, and database archi architecture. You should understand each of these three parts. And as I said, we won't cover these areas in depth, but we will discuss them briefly. And if there's something you really don't understand, Google it and you will find your answer. So let's start off with programming language. If you're completely new to web development, you probably don't know a programming language and you're wondering which language should I learn? It does not matter which language you learn. Just pick a language and learn it. Also learn what data types are, such as int, float, boolean, and so on. I can recommend, however, that you start off with learning a simple language like PHP, JavaScript, or Python. Neither of these languages requires compiling, which means you can simply write code and check if your code works immediately, all right? If you know one program language and understand data types, what data types are and how to use them, you know all programming languages, or you can at least learn any programming language very easy. Then off to frameworks. The basic idea of a framework is to not have to redo everything over and over again. The frameworks has a lot of already defined functions and structure that you can simply just plug into and start programming. I have listed a couple of examples, Express, Express.js for JavaScript, Django for Python, Falcon for PHP and Send for PHP. So basically once you get a programming language down, start experimenting with a framework. And when you learn a program language, start with a simple functional programming. That is basically just writing code in a file, all right? Make that work and then progress to OOP. OOP is, stands for Object Oriented Programming and is mainly used in the frameworks, all right? 
also learn about why you should use a framework, which framework you should use when. There are different use cases for different languages and different frameworks. So try to find out these things, all right? So it's really good to know. Also learn about MVC architecture. When I learned MVC first, it was the best thing I ever learned in programming, I think, because my code got so structured and easy to scale. MVC stands for uh, Model View Controller. The model is basically the data storage. The view is the front end and the controller is the logic uh, handled by the programming language of choice. Then you should learn databases and database architecture. Now this is a big, big subject and you can read multiple books on thousands of pages of this. So we'll only cover what you should know. Start by studying a couple of relational databases. The first thing I would do is check out MySQL. It's a relational database, which means that there are relations between the data in the tables. Then proceed to object databases. Learn supported data types for each database. Learn what kind of data you can store, how much data you can store. Also learn how to store the data efficiently. For example, learn how would you, what, what would, would be the best way to store an image in a specific database? Should you store the image directly in the database or should you maybe store a link to a place, a file on the server, which might be an image and simply reuse the link to access the image or the file. Learn how to optimize your databases. For example, by using cache uh, for optimizing uh, access, access to the database. And to start off, simply start by learning how to store very simple data like a name or a number or anything like that in a relational database such as MySQL. That's the easiest way to get started. For MySQL, you can use something called PHP MyAdmin, which make makes the process of creating databases in MySQL very simple. You can do it with an interface with PHP MyAdmin. But we will discuss more about that in just a little while. So that's a glimpse of what you should know on the back, at, back end. So let's continue on to web servers. For production, you can use different web servers. It's good if you know the, those I have listed here, when to use them and how to use them, also in different case user scenarios for different scale of, scalability and speed. But you can check out Apache, you can check out Nginx and Node.js. For local development, it's good if you install WAMP, XAMP or MAMP or something similar. These are local development servers that you can use in your uh, computer. If you have Windows, you can use WAMP. It stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So that's a good way to start learning. Simply learn Apache, MySQL, and PHP by using WAMP on your Windows computer or XAMP on your Mac computer. And also, as I said, learn when to use which production servers. Server. Read up on the benefits and the pros and the cons of each server and try out a couple of different simple applications and see what uh, ben do ben benchmarks to see which server performs the best under certain uh, circumstances. All right. And then for server, I have only written Linux Ubuntu. It's basically the only thing you need to get started. It works for everything in web development. So you can run your web server on a Linux Ubuntu server. It's pretty easy to get started. I would recommend that you use SSH to connect to the computer. Or sorry, to the server if you don't have a Linux Ubuntu computer at home. So now when you know these things, you can start off with the basics and just use a couple of tricks just to try all these things out rather easily. So number one, set up a local development server on your computer where you can actually write code and run, for example, PHP. 
And as I said, for this, you can use WAMP or XAMP or MAMP, for example. Once you've done that, learn simple front-end code and build a simple user interface. As we discussed, HTML and CSS. Start by learning HTML and then process, progress to CSS. And for example, you can build a simple form where the user can fill in, let's say, age, email, name, something simple like that, and maybe as a submit button. Also try to style the form with the CSS. And learn a programming language that's simple to understand. As I talked about, PHP is easy. Uh, JavaScript, Python. These are all widely used for backend programming. They do not require compiling and runs perfectly on the local WAMP or XAMP server. Once you've done that, learn how to store data in a database. And as we talked about use, for example, MySQL with PHP my admin. It's a super simple start, really fast way to get started. And understand the basics of database architecture. How are the, how is the data connected to each other? How can I uh, make this architecture of a specific 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 database as optimized as possible and as clean as possible? All right. So yes, learn how to insert some data with your programming language and uh, how to fetch data with your programming language from a database on your local computer, on your client. And finally, study how number one to four are connected to each other. For example, how does the user interface communicate with the backend? How can you send data from a form on the front end to the backend? How is the front and back end connected to the web server and how is the web server ran on the server? These are things you should know and can study while you do these kind of things. So you can see this uh, start with the basic uh, screen as it's a simple way to get started by following these steps. And finally, have fun, enjoy programming, learn more languages, learn new stuff. So that's it for this little guide. I hope you learned something. Just follow these steps, take it a couple of months, let it take its time, you don't have to stress. And you should, with no problem, be able to uh, work in a professional web development job. All right, so good luck. Bye-bye.